morning and welcome to the Church of the Holy Cross for our online worship of morning prayer on this third Sunday of Lent. My name is Trevor Spencer and it is our joy to be able to worship together across the internet. I'd love for you to say hello to one another in the chat room. Tell us where you're worshiping from and who's with you in the room. And if you are visiting with us this morning, we'd love to hear from you that you might fill out our digital welcome card, which you'll find in the chat room on a link there. If you are um, new to worshiping with us, we wanna encourage you to uh, kind of make space for your worship this morning. That might mean having your Bible there, uh, lighting a candle, um, just preparing your area to worship the Lord. And as we do that this morning, we want to prepare by saying a prayer together. Would you pray with me? Quiet our minds, O Lord, and gladden our hearts that as we gather together, we may be open to your presence and find this place is the very gate of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in His presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at His hands, to declare His most worthy praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty God and merciful Lord grant you absolution, remission of all your sins, true repentance and amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sin, and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our, our mouths shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O, o Lord, Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, As it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and ever shall be, world without, without end. end, amen. Praise the Lord. The, the Lord's, Lord's name be praised. Let us now say together the Jubilate. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. A reading from Psalm. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple, the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even more, even much more fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant mourned, in keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumption sins, presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
In the temple, he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, destroy the temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Would you pray with me? Father, we do ask that you would open your word to us by your Holy Spirit, that you would uh, speak it to our minds, that you would plant it in our hearts and you would grow it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we are nearing the midway point in Lent and in our Lenten series called Living Lent, where we are exploring different aspects of the Christian life that are common to all of us. And so far, we've looked at how we escape temptation and then how we can set our minds on things of God. Ultimately, our goal is to live confidently with and for Jesus. Lent is a season of preparation for Easter, and it's appropriate for us to ask the question, what kind of person are you becoming? And this week's Living Lent theme is becoming zealous for God. It comes from the disciples' observation that Jesus was zealous for God's house, the temple. And after he clears and cleanses the temple, they remember a verse that comes from Psalm 69. Zeal for your house will consume me. You know what? I don't remember the last time I used the word zeal in a conversation. It's not a word that ever rolls off my tongue, you know, like... You know, Jill and David, they're such foodies, always zealous for those bougie meals. You know, pate, poke, noke. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce any of those, but <laughs> you know, I never say sentences like that. Or that Trevor Spencer, he has a lot of zeal for Carolina football. It's unwarranted zeal, but it's still zeal. <laughs> Usually the word zeal has a negative connotation often being viewed as unwarranted, misplaced, or over the top. This reminds me of a story about a zealous pastor who is gifted in healing prayer ministry. And many people would come to him for prayer. And at one service, he made the invitation, anyone with special needs that you would like prayer for, please come forward. And with that, a man named John got into line, and when it was his turn, the pastor asked John, what do you want me to pray for you? And John replied, Pastor, I need you to pray for help with my hearing. So at once, the pastor put one finger on the side of John's ear, and he placed one hand on top of his head, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed, and the congregation joined in with great enthusiasm. And after a few minutes, the pastor removed his hands, he stood back and he asked, John, how is your hearing now? And John answered, I don't know. My hearing is actually next Thursday in the magistrate's court. <laughs> Even a gifted minister can be overzealous from time to time. And broadly speaking, we either really don't know what zeal is or we're not particularly interested in having it. Both culturally and within the Christian uh, church. Even here in the South, where we like to think that we're still a Christian society, we face serious headwinds. Perhaps you've heard, or maybe even you've said something like this. You know, it's okay for you to go to church, 
but it's not okay for you to take your faith so seriously that it alters the way you live your life. You wouldn't want to be overzealous, would you? Or think about the no-no topics when you're at a social event. Now, I know you haven't been to a serious social event in a long time, but I know that you remember the rules, right? When you're at a party, it's not polite to bring up what? Religion or politics. Steer clear of these topics. But if you're gonna be serious about being a disciple of Jesus, and the point of following Jesus is so that you might become like him, and Jesus is zealous, then that must mean that you and I are meant to be full of zeal as well. We are to come, become people who are zealous for God. What then does this mean for us? There's a church planner named Dave Harvey, and he wrote this. Zeal is desire on steroids. Zeal is a deep desire that defines how we live and reveals what we love. Isn't that a great line? Zeal is desire on steroids. It's, uh, I can think about all kinds of places in my life, and one of those uh, is back in middle school. Desire, so, when I had a desire that was so great that I just had to have it. When I was in middle school, I wanted one piece of clothing so badly that I, I did everything to get it. Maybe, maybe you had something like this. Maybe you wanted that perfect little, perfect poodle skirt, right? Or if you grew up in the 70s, maybe you wanted a velvet leisure suit like Trey wears. Um, for me, it was a Coca-Cola rugby shirt. And every single person in school had one. All right, that's a total lie. Not everybody had one, but it seemed like it. And my desire to have one was off the charts. And looking back, the desire revealed something that I loved. I wanted the status that came with being a walking advertisement for Coca-Cola. I wanted the status that came with having the in clothes. And it also, this desire, this zeal for this item, it defined how I lived, which was mostly begging and pleading my parents until they relented and bought me one. That's how desire on steroids works. That's how zeal works. And likewise, Jesus' zeal revealed what he loved, and, he and it defined how he lived. So what does Jesus love? Well, our text this morning says that he had so much zeal for God's house that when he arrived at the temple in Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, and he found the people selling ox and sheep and pigeons, he found the money changers sitting at the tables, that he created a, cord of, uh, a whip of cords, and he used it to drive them out of the temple. And he dumped the coins that belonged to the money changers, and he flipped over their tables. Now, Jesus' zeal for God's house wasn't simply about the building. Like, oh my goodness, they're cluttering this place up. And those pigeons, they're doing what pigeons do. They're pooping on everything. No, his zeal, his zeal was about what was supposed to be taking place in the temple. The temple, it was the place where God's presence dwelled. And it was meant to be the place where God's people came to meet with him. And so our passage begins at the very beginning it by telling us that they're in Jerusalem for the Passover because the law required every Jewish man to make an annual pilgrimage to the temple in Jerusalem for the Passover. And it was there, it was there that they were to remember God's mighty act in rescuing Israel, the Jewish nation, from slavery in Egypt. To remember, they were there to remember that God rescues people. And each year they would come, they would remember this, they would make their sacrifice for sin, offering an animal, that's why all the business was taking place, so they didn't have to bring an animal all the way from Capernaum or somewhere far off, they could just get it on the way in. But they would come each year to make sacrifice, to receive forgiveness, and to be restored to relationship with God. 
It was more than spiritual tourism. In the temple, God was fulfilling his desire, his purpose to rescue people from their sin and to restore them to relationship with himself. That was the intent of the temple. Perhaps that sounds familiar. In the New Testament, we remember and we often quote, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Up until this point, God has given the temple to maintain relationship with humanity. And now comes Jesus. When Jesus zealously drives out the corruption, he's doing it because he too loves humanity and he wants us to be restored to him. And the temple, God's temple, his dwelling place where all that was supposed to be happening has become corrupted. See, Jesus' zeal reveals what he loves and he loves us. Second, his zeal, his passion for humanity, it defines how he lives. After seeing all of this, dis, uh, all this take place, the disciples remembered the line, the quote, that zeal for your house will consume me. That this was supposed to characterize the coming Messiah. And so that when they see Jesus do this, their mind is drawn to the fact that the Messiah loves God's house. I want you to notice a couple things. Zeal, it consumes him. That's not a, a simple, you know, it's one of the things that he likes to be about. No, the, the word translated consumes is better translated as devours. He's devoured by the desire to bring it into the marketplace, in the temple, so that worshipers, so that the pilgrims may genuinely meet with God and be restored to him. His anger and his energy, they're justified because the money changers and the vendors and all of the activity are preventing people from encountering the eternal, loving, forgiving Father. This purpose has consumed Jesus. And zeal also leads him to take some risks. Zeal for God will lead all of us to take some risks. Now imagine you are the Jewish leadership. If you weren't aware of Jesus before this event, you certainly are now, right? And these leaders will be the very people who will be trying to kind of entrap Jesus throughout the three years of his ministry. And they'll eventually accuse him and arrest him and have him crucified. Jesus' zeal defines how he lives and acts. And he's willing to risk his life for the Jewish people, he's willing to risk his life for the Gentile people who are in the Gentile court of the temple, and he's willing to risk his life for you. He loves the world, he loves all of us, he loves you that much. He's willing to risk it all. But Jesus is not only willing to risk his life, he's actually planning on giving it up. In verse 18, the Jews ask for a sign, which is not uncommon for them. Prove to us why you have the authority to do this thing. And in his response, Jesus reveals his plan. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews, they were incredulous. It had taken 46 years to build and restore the temple, but the disciples would later realize that Jesus was talking not about the building, but his body. He would die. The Jews would destroy him. And in three days, he would rise from the grave. Jesus was planning from the very beginning to give his life for them, for those he loves. And his zeal, his zeal for his father's house reveals who he loves and defines how he lives. And there's one more uh, to this, uh, there's more to this last observation. 
that points to a bigger picture at work in this passage. Jesus isn't just telling us, oh, I love the church or I love the temple, so you should go to church and take the church seriously, though, of course, that's important. He's not just saying, oh, you guys got to get the sacrifice right or just do more. Or if by chance you're sitting at home transacting some business while you're uh, watching this service, he's not just saying stop doing business while at church. No, what Jesus is doing is he's replacing all of the old ways. He's replacing all of the old ways. And here's how. Jesus himself is the new temple. The temple building was where God dwelt. And along comes Jesus, having come to live among humans, God's son, and he is now the place where God dwells because Jesus is God. And if you want to encounter God today, you no longer have to go to the temple in Jerusalem. You just have to go to Jesus. He's the one you have to have. He's the one you can have. He is the new temple, but he's also the perfect Passover lamb. He will replace all of the animals being sold for sacrifice in this passage. He will offer one perfect sacrifice once and for all, his life on the cross. Jesus himself will be our Passover lamb. It is by his blood that we are made clean. It is by his life that his death on the cross, our sins are taken care of, and it is by his resurrection that we live again. And that brings us to the third point. Jesus' sacrifice is once and for all. His temple will be destroyed and rebuilt in three days. His resurrection, which we celebrate on Easter, but frankly, we celebrate every day. In reality, it ends the need for the repeated annual sacrifice. See, Jesus He's replacing the old way, and he's providing a new, perfect, and complete way for you to be restored to God. He's calling you out of your desire for him to have zeal, to give up the old ways, to give up your old ways as well. Those ones, those ways that are old, they're dead or they're dying, and he's inviting you to be zealous for him. You may find, as one pastor wrote, that because God first loved us, true zeal, true zeal for God, it's kind. It kind of melts in your mouth. It goes down easy. Yet it may have to drive out some money changers from your temple now and then. Some of your old ways may be sticking around. And if you're going to live the life he's calling you to, you may need to turn a few tables over. Will you ask God today to reveal the things that you love? And if you're loving the wrong things, to help you turn those tables over. The tables of ongoing sin, the tables of unforgiveness, the tables of stubbornness and disobedience. Ask him to help you make him your first love. And also let your zeal for God change how you live. Let Jesus' zeal and purpose be your burning desire. Uh, your burning desire. Your burning desire to help other people meet and worship God. That was his purpose. J.C. Ryle once said, uh, wrote, a Zeal is a burning desire to please God, to do his will, and to advance his glory in the world in every possible way. How can you advance his glory in the world? Well, you could invite somebody to come join you at church. You could change your family schedule so that you might have time to serve the needs of other people. You might give up that expensive new toy you plan on buying or put, uh, put your vacation plans uh, on hold so that you can put more of your money, which in reality is God's money, to put those things, those resources to work for the kingdom of God. And finally, let God change who you are. 
you have the opportunity by putting your faith in Jesus, by renewing your faith in Jesus, to actually become the temple of God. Paul writes to the Corinthians, he says this, do you know, not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. What an incredible truth that when Jesus is overcoming, he's turning over the old ways and replacing them with the new way. The new way is that his temple actually becomes you. The temple's not just Jesus, which it is. The temple is not just the church, though it is, but every single Christian ever. If you've put your trust in him, God has given you his Holy Spirit to live in you. You are his dwelling place. And because of that, you can face any challenge and any opportunity. You can work for his purpose with boldness. And at any moment when you feel uh, concerned, uncertain, weak, you can simply ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. You say, he says, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He will be with you to the very end of the age. And you can go to him at any moment because he is with you. And so with that, let us pray. Lord, we do ask that you would come. We want to be zealous for you, to have passion for you. We want to live for you this Lent and every day. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to love that which you love, to serve others like you serve us, and to live for you in the world. We need your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let us respond now with the words that we believe using the Apostles' Creed. Please say with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, I do want to say again, welcome to uh, Holy Cross. If you're visiting with us this morning, uh, there from your home, uh, we would love to uh, hear from you. And we invite you to fill out the digital welcome card. The link is in the chat feature. Uh, this will let us to let us follow up with you and tell uh, to share with you how we're following Jesus uh, here at Holy Cross and how we are letting Him transform us by His grace and how we are uh, seeking to fulfill His kingdom mission in the world. We'd love for you to be a part of that. So please do fill that out. Uh, I do want to say that we have a time change coming next week. We spring forward on Sunday, March 14th. Don't forget to change your clocks before you go to bed. If not, you'll be uh, required to watch this service on the uh, YouTube replay. And uh, so please do remember to change your clocks forward, whether you're online or in person, that will uh, be make you able to be on time. Uh, we have a survey that we have been uh, sending around where we uh, want your perspective on returning to church. And we want to just ask you, if you haven't had a chance to fill that out, to please go ahead and do that. Uh, we want one survey for each family unit. So uh, please, you can click on the link in the chat. Uh, it should open up in another window. You could fill that out uh, after the service. Uh, there are a couple ways for you, your kids and your young people, your students to connect. Uh, you can go to holycross.net slash events. There is Kids Club registration beginning uh, tomorrow, uh, which is our day camp for preschoolers here at uh, Sullivan's and at Daniel Island campuses. 
there are student spring retreats for middle school and high school, or, uh, middle school and high school coming. And uh, there are many ways for you to connect your kids and your students to uh, what the Lord's doing. And so we want you just to follow that at holycross.net slash events. Finally, we come to the part of the service where we give back to the Lord. And we at Holy Cross just want to say thank you for all the many ways that you are living generously and you are giving regularly to the work of Holy Cross. Uh, you can go to holycross.net slash give and give online at this time. I want to encourage you now to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as a sacrifice for all.
Let's now go to the Lord in prayer. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Christ, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Amen. Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give and us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend, defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Heavenly Father, you made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Look with compassion upon the heartfelt desires of your servants and purify our disordered affections, that we may behold your eternal glory in the face of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving and praise. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to add your prayers of thanksgiving and intercessions into the public chats. And if you'd uh, like to volunteer, uh, to have a volunteer pray with you privately, you can request us a prayer by clicking the request prayer button. Lord, we do want to pray for those who have particular needs today. Lord, uh, for these who are sick, Lord, for Wendy Coker and Andrea Roth, for Luann Rogers, for Harry Moore, we pray that you would bring health and healing to them. Lord, for those that we love who need you to make their bodies well, we pray that you would come and pour out your spirit upon them. Lord, I pray now particularly for Thomas Johnson, Lord, that you would save and preserve his life, that you would provide a miracle for him, that you would be with his wife and son, with Stacy and Clayton and his other family members, Lord, that you would be their comfort, that you would be present to them, you would bring them peace during these hard times. Lord, we pray and we give thanks for baby Rachel, for Matt and Elizabeth Jones and their family as they welcome their new daughter into the world. What a beautiful blessing she is. Lord, we pray that you would uh, bring health not only to our nation, but to all the nations of the world. Thank you, Lord, that we have these vaccines that more of them are coming online. We pray that you would multiply their supply, that you would multiply uh, their uh, receipt, that people would receive these vaccines. Lord, thank you for the knowledge you've given us of our human body. And we pray that through the vaccine and through your power working in us, we may be healed of COVID-19, that you would bring healing to the world. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people 
and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. and your minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us for our online worship this week. We look forward to seeing you in person or online next week. God bless you and goodbye.